fitness or save money or out of a desire of sustainability, but they persist as bicycle commuters because it's fun. Uh, April C., who's a two-mile commuter, in our survey said, commuting provides an easy and stress-free start to my morning, also a great stress reliever after work. So you may be asking, what type of bike do I need? That's why we have our experts today. So if we have, uh, let's talk to Ryan and find out what he recommends as far as bikes for commuting. Yes, hello. So let's talk about road so, bikes. Um, they're probably the most popular bike that I see on the road. Give us a little idea, Ryan, of what you would recommend. Yeah, so road bikes, um, you know, as you said, are a very popular style of bike. Um, you know, the, uh, I guess, traditional use for them are, you know, more for uh, longer distance or racing um, type riding, but, uh, you know, really can be outfitted to do, um, you know, uh, bike commuting as well. Um, you know, they're good because they're light, they're efficient. Um, you know, some of the, uh, um, the downfalls to a road bike, um, you know, with the narrower tires, you do have to pay a little bit closer attention, attention to where you're riding, you know, uh, storm sewers, cracks in the road, and typically are more expensive bikes. And, um, you know, people aren't always willing to use a bike, uh, of this nature, um, you know, as a, as a daily commuter. So, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, we see a lot of it. We, we have the ability to outfit, uh, you know, virtually any style of bike uh, for, uh, for daily commuting. So another type of bike that you see on the road quite a bit. So, Ryan, give us some ideas of what a mountain bike is and how that would work for commuting. Yeah, so mountain bikes, uh, you know, are typically, uh, you know, an off-road uh, type of uh, bike. Um you know, designed uh, uh, any more with, uh, with suspension, um, you know, um, at least on the front, if not front and rear. Um, you know, a lot of them are going to be, especially nowadays, equipped with, uh, you know, disc brakes and um, uh, hydraulic disc brakes. Uh, so, uh, but again, um, you know, we can outfit uh, with narrow uh, road slick type tires. Um, actually prefer uh, mountain bikes as a, as a commuter bike. Uh, just because, you know, you can still get a, a nice wide tire, like a, you know, a two inch wide tire uh, that's a road slick. So it uh, road it rides a lot quicker, smoother um, than with your knobby tires. Um, but you're not having to pay as close of attention to, uh, you know, what's coming up in front of you. Um, some people do like uh, still having the suspension on there, um, you know, because the roads are, aren't always the best. And, uh you know, being able to be less fatigued, less beat up uh, by the time you get to work or home, um, you know, can make a big difference. So, uh, again, most of these bikes can be outfitted uh, with the necessary things for uh, for commuting fenders, uh, whether they're just clip-on fenders or full fenders, uh, rear racks of different types, uh, lights, kickstands, that kind of thing. So, um, really, uh, you know, a little bit more of a what I would call a versatile bike for uh, for this type of use. Plus, uh, you know, if you're going to be a year-round commuter, uh, they make studded or winter tires for mountain bikes, uh, so you can uh, still stay uh, sure-footed uh, when the uh, conditions go south. When you're talking about both road bikes and mountain bikes, you mentioned, you know, switching out tires depending on uh, the weather. That's true about both road bikes and mountain bikes, correct? It can be to a certain extent. Mountain bikes are uh, a lot easier. Uh, road bikes it's really going to uh, vary on uh, the type of road bike and what the clearances are on there. Um, you know, typically with a road bike, you uh, need to stay with a, you know, road slick type tire, although there are some, uh, you know, low profile studded tires that you can uh, fit on certain road bikes. Uh, that would be more of a, you know, maybe a disc brake road bike uh, or into some of the, uh, what they call any road bikes, um, you know, that would have a wider uh, clearance for, uh, you know, for wider tires. Um, but, uh, you know, the road bikes, you know, m most people are going to more of a, I guess, more of a durable tire, uh, you know, like a, 
Continental Gator Skin or a uh, uh, Bontrager Hard Case or, you know, some of the other tires that are out there uh, to help with, uh, you know, reduce the chance of uh, of flats on their commute in. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Those are some uh, great descriptions of the road bike and the mountain bike. Um, next up, we've got the hybrid. And uh, Justin is going to give us his recommendation on the exact Hello. Um, yeah, on, on the hybrids are a great style for using for commuting because you're going to sit fairly upright on them, so you have good visibility of the of the surroundings if you're riding through traffic. Uh, you have lots of different tire variations. You can run wider tires. You can run skinnier tires. You have abilities to put racks and fenders and lights and kickstands on them. Um, so they're going to do quite well in a city environment if your commute isn't overly long. It's very easy to outfit them so that you can carry everything with you that you would like. Uh, they will handle some gravel or some kind of uh, looser rock as well, but they're going to be best suited for kind of a paved surface. Um, a lot of people already own these, so they make great kind of uh, first, first styles of commuting bikes to see if it's going to work out for you without spending a great deal of money on it. And then another style that um, maybe if you don't know much about bikes, they look really similar, um, is a cycle cross bike. And I do know that cycle cross is becoming a popular sport, um, but I'm guessing that you can also use a cycle cross bike for commuting to work. Is that true, Justin? You, you can. Um, some of the true cycle cross bikes are built more as a racing platform, so they will not offer quite as uh, versatile of options for kind of upfitting the bike. Um, there's a lot more bikes in the category that's referred to as gravel bikes that are kind of, they again have that same look with a, kind of looks like a road bike, but it has a, a much fatter tire on it. Um, those are probably going to be uh, just a very, very good all-around commuting bike for somebody if they, say, want to ride kind of road bike stuff on the weekends, but they want to use a bike that's going to go to work, or if they have a longer commute, they're going to be able to log more miles on these because it's going to have kind of more road bike um, attributes to it, but it's going to give you some more versatility than what the true road bike will for adding things, again, like fenders or racks, uh, just things that commuters are typically going to enjoy because they're able to carry their gear with them and they're able to keep both them and their, and their bike cleaner along the way if they do hit uh, rain or snow or some other, other uh, elements out there. Excellent. Thank you so much, Justin. So another bike we're going to talk about briefly is called the cargo bike. So if you need to carry a lot of things to work, you may want to consider the cargo bike. These bikes have a built-in rear rack that is extended and able to carry hundreds of pounds of cargo. And I am lucky enough, my boss keeps one here at work. And so sometimes on lunch, I will take the cargo bike and head on up to Trader Joe's and grab lunch. Um, I have yet to put 100 pounds of cargo in it, but I'm based on how well it handles with uh, a thing of sushi and a salad, it's a pretty, pretty cool bike. Um, they also come with kits that are available to con convert a standard bike to a cargo bike. And it's just an awesome all-around bike for transporting um, gear, kids, stuff that you need for work. It's just a, a pretty cool uh, extra bike. Next up, we have what's called a folding bike. And I've seen these uh, quite a few times on the bike trail, and I'm super curious about how they really fold. But wait, Derek, do you want to give us some highlights of your, what you know about folding bikes? Sure, Kathy. Uh, there are a good variety of folding bikes out there, and there's a few uh, advantages to having one. Um, obviously, the first one that people think of is the uh, storage capabilities of it and uh, just being able to transport it. So. A lot of times, uh, since a folding bike is able to be uh, taken down, um, sometimes you remove parts, sometimes they actually all stay attached to the folding bike. Uh, it's easy to get it in and out of the trunk or back of a vehicle, so it's a great solution for a first or last mile uh, when someone may have to drive a great distance, and then it's beneficial to park a little bit away, away from work. So folding bike is uh, good for that category or type of commute if we think about it. Uh, they also tend to be fairly small and lightweight compared to some other types of bikes. So um, from a riding standpoint or getting in and out of a building, uh, doorways, elevators, or even folding it to store it in a cube or small office space, 
Um, they're really great for that and uh, can be a, a good choice for someone. Um, the uh, range of price of folding bikes can be anywhere from a real basic uh, four to five hundred dollar folding bike uh, up to a couple thousand for some of the really extravagant stuff. But as uh, our prior experts Ryan and Justin have said, folding bikes can have racks, fenders, lights, and all the other equipment put on it uh, to be just as uh, commuter friendly as the other types. Um, the disadvantages could be that sometimes uh, people will get one with a real small wheel size and they may not be quite as conducive to long distance riding. Um, so you would want to make sure that uh, you consult your local bike shops and be able to try something out uh, to make sure that it handles and, and turns and steers and everything the way you feel comfortable with it where you buy it. But they can be a, a, a great category of commuter bike for sure. And obviously the size of the wheels is going to be uh, how small they can fold down to. So if you've got, you know, tiny wheels, you can probably get everything to fold up, throw it into a briefcase kind of deal, but then it's more of a challenge when you're actually pedaling. Yeah, it's very common to have 20 or 24 inch wheels on folding bikes, although there are some folding bikes out there with full wheel sizes as well. It really depends on what vehicle you want to get it into. If you have to go on uh, a bus or a train or you're going to use it, um, you know, in other ways. Excellent. Well, next up is the e-bike. I'm sure most of uh, the people here listening have heard of e -bikes. I don't know what the percentage of people that own, but um, Derek, give us some ideas of what exactly makes a bike an e-bike. Well, Kathy, an e-bike uh, is short for electric hybrid bicycle, and it's basically you take in a regular bicycle, and they're adapted to have a small electric motor on it and a rechargeable battery. Uh, and as this category has evolved, the, the motors have gotten smaller and lighter and the batteries smaller and lighter. Uh, and so what it allows a rider to do uh, is uh, overcome a lot of the obstacles that some people may have for commuting or riding, um, such as distance, hills, headwinds, uh, or heat. They want to get to where they're going and not be all sweaty. An electric hybrid bicycle allows you to pedal uh, and then choose the level of assistance you want based on what activities you have in the rest of your day so you can get a great workout or just a little bit of a workout or anywhere in between. Um, and it does uh, give you the ability to, to ride uh, on a lot more occasions. Uh, one of the neat things about uh, e-bikes is that because you have the electric motor assisting you uh, with ranges anywhere from 15 or 20 miles up to uh, 60 to 80 miles, uh, you can choose any wheel and tire size. So uh, all of us have talked about different types of bikes, and there are road bikes, mountain bikes, cyclocross bikes, uh, cargo bikes, folding bikes. You know, all of the different categories come in e-bikes as well. And so you really don't uh, have to be limited. You can pick whatever style of bike you like, whatever wheel and tire size that's going to work for the seasonality of this uh, in your commute. Um, and because you have the assistance with the motor, it will also help you carry all the extra weight of any other equipment, um, which I know we'll be talking about in a later webinar. Definitely. And can you actually, maybe one of the bike shop guys can answer this, can you take your normal bike and make it into an e-bike? I'd be happy to... to chat about that. So there are some nice quality aftermarket, we call them conversion kits out there, uh, and you buy the kit based on the wheel size, like the motor and a battery, and then whatever type of controller you would like, uh, whether you want to have to pedal to pick your level of assistance or perhaps even have a small throttle on there to get you going from a stop or to get across an intersection and things like that. So in most cases, yes, it's uh, okay to uh, do a conversion and those uh, you know, traditionally e-bikes will uh, be in maybe the 800 to $3,000 price range, um, and they can go lower and higher than that. And your conversion kits might be anywhere from um, 1000 to $2,000 based on how much range and power you'd like. Okay. Thank you, Eric. As uh, far as the last bike that we're going to list today, it's the bike share bike. A bike share bike is when bikes are in your community, they don't... They're not something that you buy. They're something that you rent. Uh, usually these bikes are stationed on street corners and can be checked out with a credit card or an app on your phone. 
Um, I know Mason City just launched their bike share program, and most of the big cities in the state of Iowa have them already. I know Des Moines does. Um, it's just a neat feature that a, a community can offer you because you can just grab an existing bike, use it when you need it, and return it when you're uh, done. So a question after we've listed all these bikes, um, maybe I'll th throw this out to Justin. Um, of all the bikes we've listed, what would you say is your most popular when you are talking to people who want to commute to work? The hybrid is still going to be our most popular, just just based on the the volume in which are out there in the in the market. Um, again, the, the the price, the kind of adaptability of that bike. Um, a lot of the newer newer customers who are coming in looking for them. There's a lot of disc brake offering going on in that particular category, so we're seeing a lot of people just kind of focusing using that uh, that particular product. Uh, a few of the brands will even kind of make out of the box commuter bikes where it will have kickstands, racks, fenders, sometimes mirrors, even all kind of integrated into it so people can just grab them off the floor and go. They don't even have to do any kind of aftermarket stuff to them. All right. Well, while a bike is a prerequisite for becoming a bike commuter, don't think you need to invest in a brand new bicycle to commute. A variety of bicycles can serve as a commuter bike or um, how about Ryan? Can you take a bike that you already have in your garage and maybe modify it by putting a rack on it or changing it so that you can get to work? Uh, yeah, for the most part you can. Um, you know, there's maybe a few exceptions, uh, you know, on some of the, you know, fender options and, um, and rack options depending on the bike. Um, and depend on what you want to carry too, uh, you know. But for the most part, um, as Justin was saying, you know, the, the hybrid style bikes are typically the uh, um, super easy to, to convert. Um, you know, mountain bikes uh, typically are, are pretty easy to convert. Um, but manufacturers are starting to realize that, um, you know, some of these accessories are wanting to be put on bikes that maybe don't accommodate them. So, you know, you take your uh, your higher end carbon road bike for example, and there are some racks out there that you can mount uh, through the quick release um, on the rear wheel and then, um, you know, find some sort of uh, either a seat collar attachment or um, uh, some sort of attachment to secure the, um, um, the struts, uh, you know, up on top. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to reinvent a bike that maybe you're not using, um, you know, some fender's rack and a set of slicks on an old mountain bike you know, that you bought in the, in the 90s when the mountain bike boom started um, and been sitting there ever since, you know, that would be a perfect candidate uh, to uh, convert to a, a commuter bike, and it's really not too expensive to do that. Completely agree. Well, a simple piece of advice is just to get out and ride. Find any bike, regardless of the type, and just ride. Once you get into cycling, you'll quickly form your own opinions on what you want from a bicycle, and hopefully today's webinar helped you a bit with what bike you think might work for you. Be sure to consult your local bike shop for advice and ask fellow coworkers who commute what works for them. Of course, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of bike commuting, what to wear, how to get there, where to park, those types of things. So hopefully you'll tune in uh, next week for another commuting webinar. I'd like to definitely thank our experts today, Derek and Justin and Ryan, for being on the webinar. And also thanks to our producer, Mr. Mark Wyatt, behind the scenes. Uh, if you'd like to um, get the ebook, it's free. All you have to do is go to iowabicyclecoalition.org backslash bike to work. So we do have a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer them either myself or somebody on our expert panel. Um, I know one question somebody asked was, what other gear do I need to commute? And if you tune in on a future Tuesday webinar, we are going to talk about that very topic. Uh, somebody's asking, how much does an e-bike cost? I think Derek briefly hit on that, but can you kind of give us an idea of how much an e-bike costs, Derek? Sure, Kathy. Uh there are uh, there's a huge variety of e-bikes out there. Uh, some of the things that you 
uh, could look at buy direct. Um, a lot of options, uh, you know, through your local bicycle stores, which of course is where we would suggest that you go as a resource. Um, we've found that a quality e-bike that has the reliability and the range uh, and is a little bit lighter weight bike, it makes it easier to handle and use, uh, will start around twelve to fifteen hundred dollars uh, and go up from there. Uh, there are e-bikes out there with 60 to 80 miles of range for around two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars and a lot of times um, you know people ask the question of how you know how many charge cycles will a battery take and how far can I go um, so you want to make sure that you uh, make a quality investment the first time to get it right um, and as always uh, make sure that you have a chance to test ride something that the bike rides and pedals like you like it to feel um, so it's a long answer to a short question, but they're going to spend fifteen to twenty-five hundred dollars for something real nice that would serve them for many, many years. And I know my experience with an e-bike. I don't own one yet, but um, they can really give you some power. So it just really depends on what you're using your e-bike for. If it's to haul a lot of weight, um, you may need that extra power. But if you're just, you know, going a three three mile commute to work, um, you might not need it to be a uh, a 20 mile an hour bike ride. It may just, you know, more to help you get up the hills. So, uh, somebody is asking about uh, bike share programs in other cities besides Des Moines. Um, I know that there uh, are bike share conversations happening in most of the major cities in Iowa right now. Um, I don't think we have anything uh, set in stone as far as I'm aware of, but. Uh, We'll keep you posted on both. I know Cedar Rapids is working on something. Iowa City is working on something. Um, and I mentioned earlier that Mason City has just launched theirs. Well, I think we'll go ahead and end the webinar for this week. We hope you tune in next Tuesday for another um, edition of uh, excerpts from our ebook. And as always, uh, Iowa Bicycle Coalition is a member-based organization. You can join by simply going to iowabicyclecoalition.org backslash join. Thanks.